The casting process for the 1973 movie Lost Horizon was a careful selection of talents to bring the story to life. The film required a mix of experienced and new actors who could embody the film's adventure, drama, and romance. For the lead role of Richard Conway, the producers chose Peter Finch, an accomplished British actor known for his powerful performances. Finch's ability to convey depth and complexity in his characters made him an ideal fit for the role. The part of Sally Hughes, the glamorous journalist, went to Liv Ullman, a Swedish actress who had worked with renowned director Ingmar Bergman. Ullman's natural charisma and acting prowess made her a standout choice for the role. George Harris, a British Jamaican actor, was cast as George Andrews, a military man who becomes a crucial part of the story. Harris's experience in both British and American cinema made him a versatile addition to the cast. The role of Chang, the High Lama, was given to Charles Boyer, a French actor with a long and distinguished career. Boyer's ability to convey wisdom and serenity made him the perfect choice for the part. The casting of the other roles was equally meticulous, with each actor carefully chosen for their ability to contribute to the film's overall vision. Audition and chemistry tests were conducted to ensure that the cast had the right dynamic, and the pivotal moments in the casting process were those where the producers saw the spark of magic that comes from a truly great cast. In the end, the casting of Lost Horizon was a testament to the power of careful selection and the ability to see the potential in each actor to bring a story to life. Charles Gerrard, the director of the 1973 movie Lost Horizon, brought the story to life with a unique vision. He was influenced by the original 1933 film and the novel by James Hilton. Gerrard's approach was to create a lush, colorful world that would contrast sharply with the chaotic reality the characters were escaping from. Gerrard's style is characterized by his attention to detail and his ability to create visually stunning scenes. He worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a collaborative environment that allowed for creative input from all parties. The director's vision for Lost Horizon was to create a film that was not only visually stunning, but also emotionally engaging. To achieve this, Jarrett focused on the characters' emotional journeys, encouraging the actors to explore their characters' motivations and feelings deeply. He worked closely with actors like Peter Finch, Liv Ullman, and Michael York, helping them to create nuanced and believable performances. Jarrett's creative influences also included traditional Asian art and architecture, which he incorporated into the film set and costume design. The result is a film that is not only a feast for the eyes, but also a compelling story about the power of hope and the human spirit. In summary, Charles Jarrett's directorial vision for Lost Horizon was one of contrast, detail, and emotional engagement. His approach to directing and his creative influences combined to create a film that is both visually stunning and emotionally resonant. The 1973 movie, Lost Horizon, is a fascinating film that has inspired many. While I don't have personal experiences to share, I'm excited to reveal some surprising facts about it. There are scenes that have left a lasting impact on viewers, such as the breathtaking views of the hidden valley of Shangri-La and the emotional farewell scene at the end. As we delve into the film's history, you'll discover funny, shocking, and sad facts that will keep you engaged. From behind-the-scenes stories to little-known trivia, this movie has it all. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to Lost Horizon? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So, stay tuned to learn more about this classic film, and who knows, you might just find a new appreciation for it. The 1973 film, Lost Horizon, was a remarkable production that took viewers on a journey to the mythical land of Shangri-La. The set design was a significant aspect of the film's success, with art director Henry Bumstead and set decorator James Payne creating stunning, detailed sets that truly transported audiences to another world. The film's primary location was Mount Whitney Studios in California, where a massive soundstage was transformed into the breathtaking Shangri-La. The set was built to be as authentic as possible, with intricate details such as hand-painted murals, silk drapes, and delicate carvings. The result was a set that felt both grand and intimate, a place where the characters could feel at home while also being in awe of their surroundings. However, creating this world came with its challenges. The set was so large that it required its own air conditioning system to keep the temperature regulated. Additionally, the film's director, Charles Gerrard, wanted to create a sense of depth 
and scale that was difficult to achieve on a soundstage. To accomplish this, he used a technique called force perspective, where objects in the distance were made to appear smaller than those on the foreground. This created the illusion of a vast landscape, adding to the film's sense of wonder and mystery. Another innovative technique employed during production was the use of front projection. This allowed the filmmakers to project background images onto a screen in front of the actors, creating the illusion of a real location. This was used to great effect in the film's exterior shots, giving the impression that the characters were high in the Himalayas, when in reality, they were on a soundstage in California. Despite these technological advancements, the production of Lost Horizon was not without its issues. The film's budget ballooned to over 12 million, making it one of the most expensive films of its time. The production was also plagued by delays, with filming taking over six months to complete. However, despite these challenges, the film was a visual feast, with its stunning set design and innovative techniques contributing to its enduring legacy. The 1973 film adaptation of Lost Horizon has received criticism for its poor soundtrack and questionable decision to turn it into a musical. The film's financial failure is often attributed to the inclusion of songs by Burt Bacharach and Hal David, which seem out of place and do little to enhance the plot. The film's leads, Peter Finch and Liv Ullman, were both dubbed, while other actors such as James Scheidsta, Sally Kellerman, and Bobby Van performed their own singing. The story, which is set during the time of the British Empire, follows the character of James Conway, a Sassel Rhodes-type figure with a noble character. However, the decision to update the story to the present day without updating Conway's character was a misstep. Despite these issues, Lost Horizon is still a passably entertaining film, but it may not be worth the time and money invested in it. The film soundtrack has been widely criticized for its poor quality. The decision to have a deaf mime create the music is baffling and detracts from the overall quality of the film. The songs by Bacharach and David, while well known, do not fit well with the tone and flow of the film. The casting of the film has also been a subject of criticism. While Peter Finch and Liv Ullman are accomplished actors, they were not the best choices for a musical. Finch, who was born to play the lead in the original 1937 version, was dubbed in this version which takes away from his performance. On the other hand, James Scheiste, Sally Kellerman, and Bobby Van, who performed their own singing, added value to the film. The story of Lost Horizon is set in a time when the British had an empire, and the character of James Conway is a reflection of that era. However, the decision to update the story to the present day without updating Conway's character was a mistake. The film could have been more successful if it had been set in its original time period or if Conway's character had been updated to fit the modern era. In conclusion, while Lost Horizon has its moments of entertainment, it is a film that is marred by poor soundtrack choices, questionable casting, and a misguided decision to update the story. Despite these issues, it is still worth watching for fans of the original story or for those interested in seeing a different take on the classic tale. The creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the 1973 film Lost Horizon was a meticulous process, led by composers Burt Bacharach and Hal David. The music they crafted complements the narrative and emotional tone of the movie, which explores the discovery of the mystical land of Shangri-La. Bacharach and David's score is characterized by its lush orchestrations and memorable melodies. The soundtrack features songs that reflect the film's diverse settings from the bustling city of Hong Kong to the serene landscapes of Shangri-La. The music enhances the movie's narrative, underscoring the contrast between the chaos of the outside world and the peacefulness of Shangri-La. The composers worked closely with the film's director, Charles Jarrett, to ensure that the music aligned with his vision for the movie. They also collaborated with renowned musicians, including the London Symphony Orchestra, to bring their compositions to life. One of the standout tracks from the soundtrack is Living Together, Growing Together, a hopeful anthem that encapsulates the spirit of Shangri-La. The song's uplifting melody and lyrics reflect the community's commitment to harmony and cooperation. Another notable track is The World is a Circle, a contemplative ballad that explores the cyclical nature of life. The song's introspective lyrics and soothing melody provide a stark contrast to the fast-paced rhythms of the movie's earlier scenes. The music in Lost Horizon plays a crucial role in establishing the film's emotional tone. 
The composer's use of lush orchestrations and memorable melodies creates a sense of wonder and enchantment, drawing viewers into the world of Shangri-La. In crafting the musical score and soundtrack for Lost Horizon, Bacharach and David created a timeless collection of songs that complement the film's narrative and enhance its emotional impact. Their contributions to the movie's success are a testament to their musical prowess and enduring legacy. Peter Finch, known for his dramatic roles, made his film singing debut in the 1973 movie Lost Horizon. Despite his performance, the film flopped at the box office, leading to a temporary halt in Hollywood for producing musicals. Interestingly, the failure didn't stop various companies from cashing in on the film's theme. Pierre Cardin launched a line of jewelry, watches, and belts, while Marrakech, Limited, Periphery, Rigier, and Brown Jordan released clothing and furniture lines inspired by the movie Shangri-La setting. Craft Masters introduced a paint-by-number set, and Soulfield marketed a coloring book, all capitalizing on the film's allure. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1973 movie Lost Horizon is the flight to Shangri-La. The audience is treated to breathtaking aerial views of the Himalayan mountains, captured through the use of helicopter-mounted cameras. This technique, groundbreaking for its time, creates a sense of awe and wonder, immersing viewers in the beauty and isolation of the mountainous landscape. The scene also features the character of Gloria, played by Liv Ullman, who looks out the plane's window with a mix of fear and fascination. Ullman's performance is noteworthy for her ability to convey a range of emotions through subtle facial expressions, heightening the tension and anticipation of the moment. Another unforgettable scene is the first glimpse of Shangri-La, a hidden valley nestled among the mountains. The use of sweeping crane shots and vibrant colors creates a striking contrast to the harsh, barren landscapes seen earlier in the film. The audience is left with a sense of wonder and curiosity about this mysterious place. Director Charles Jarrett discussed the challenges of filming in such remote location, stating, We had to build our own roads, bring in our own equipment, and deal with unpredictable weather conditions. But the result was worth it. The landscapes are almost like another character in the film. The impact of these scenes on the audience is significant. They create a sense of wonder and adventure, drawing viewers into the story and making them feel as if they are part of the journey. The use of innovative cinematography and strong performances from the cast help to elevate these moments, making them truly iconic in the world of cinema. The closing credits of the 1973 movie Lost Horizon make it clear that the characters and incidents portrayed are fictional, with any resemblance to real people being coincidental. Two of its actors, Michael York and Olivia Hussey, had previously worked together in Romeo and Juliet and would later appear in Jesus of Nazareth. Hussey also acted alongside George Kennedy in Death on the Nile. Interestingly, Charles Boye, who stars in Lost Horizon, had a notable history with the Oscars. He was nominated for Best Actor in 1937 and 1938, but lost to Spencer Tracy both times. Despite these setbacks, Boye maintained a successful acting career, appearing in numerous films and stage productions. The 1973 movie Lost Horizon, a remake of the 1937 film, introduced audiences to the mythical land of Shangri-La, a place of peace, harmony, and long life. The film resonated with audiences seeking escapism, and spiritual enlightenment during a time of social upheaval and political unrest. Lost Horizon's depiction of an idyllic society, where people lived in harmony with nature and each other, struck a chord with viewers' disillusion with modern life's fast pace and conflict. The film's themes of peace, tolerance, and understanding contributed to discussions on relevant social issues, such as the ongoing Vietnam War and the Civil Rights Movement. The movie also influenced pop culture, inspiring a wave of interest in Eastern spirituality and mysticism in the 1970s. Shangri-La became a symbol of a utopian society, a place of harmony and balance that many people aspired to find in their lives. The film's portrayal of a hidden valley, protected by mountains and accessible only through a secret pass, added to its allure and mystique. Lost Horizon's impact went beyond its initial release, influencing later films, television shows, and books. The film's themes of spirituality, enlightenment, and the search for meaning continue to resonate with audiences today, making it a timeless classic that endures across generations. In conclusion, Lost Horizon's cultural and social impact can be seen in its contribution to discussions on relevant social issues, its influence on pop culture, 
and its enduring appeal to audiences seeking spiritual enlightenment and a better understanding of the world around them. In 1972, renowned actor Sir John Gielgud expressed hopes for the success of the film Lost Horizon, jokingly referring to it as Hello, Dalai in a letter to his partner. The film's budget was a substantial $6 million, leading Gielgud to pin his hopes on the music making it a hit. Indeed, professional vocalists Jerry Whitman, Diana Lee, and Andrew Willis provided the singing voices for the main cast, with Whitman and Lee also lending their vocals to the Disneyland Records release The World is a Circle. Interestingly, Robert Shaw was initially offered the role of Richard Conway, but ultimately did not take the part. The film's soundtrack, featuring the vocal talents of Whitman, Lee, and Willis, remains a notable aspect of the production. The 1973 film adaptation of Lost Horizon received mixed reviews from critics and underwhelming reactions from audiences. The New York Times' Vincent Canby criticized it as an unadulterated and expensive mess while Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times found it to be a handsome, empty film. However, some critics, like Variety's reviewer, praised the film's production design and cinematography. Despite the negative reviews, Lost Horizon received three Academy Award nominations, including Best Art Direction, Best Cinematography, and Best Costume Design. These nominations highlight the film's visual achievements with its lush sets, costume, and cinematography. The film's lackluster performance at the box office and the critical drubbing it received were undoubtedly disappointing for those involved, such as director Charles Gerrard and the cast, which included Peter Finch, Liv Ullman, and George Kennedy. However, the film's Academy Award nominations did provide some validation for the hard work and talent that went into creating its visual spectacle. While Lost Horizon may not be remembered as a classic of the 1970s, its Academy Award nominations, and the occasional positive review serve as a reminder of the film's visual achievements and the dedication of the cast and crew who worked on it. The 1973 film adaptation of Lost Horizon is known for its unusual history and home video release. Unlike many American films of the 70s, it wasn't available on VHS in the US until the early 90s when a limited edition Lazardisc was released it wasn't until 2011 that Sony released the movie on DVD. Michael York, one of the film stars, had mixed feelings about the production design. Despite producer Ross Hunter's reputation for lavish sets, York found the decorations tacky. The lamissary scenes, filmed in Burbank during a hot summer, were dubbed Shangri-La in the smog by York. Originally, Hunter considered having Sam Jaff reprise his role as the High Lama from the 1937 adaptation. However, Hunter decided to distance the film from its predecessor and sought out Lawrence Olivier for the part. The filming of Lost Horizon in 1973 was no small feat. The cast and crew faced numerous challenges, including a demanding director, Charles Gerrard, who was known for his high expectations. The film's lead actress, Liv Ullman, revealed that Gerrard's perfectionism often led to lengthy takes and retakes, which tested the patience and endurance of the entire team. Despite the pressure, the cast managed to find moments of levity. Peter Finch, who played the role of the High Lama, was known for his humor and often lightened the mood on set. Finch would frequently entertain his co-stars with impromptu performances, showcasing his impressive range as an actor. The film's elaborate sets and costumes were also a source of fascination for the cast. Sally Kellerman, who played Sally Hughes, recalled being awestruck by the intricate details of her costume which included a stunning headdress adorned with feathers and beads. The set design was equally impressive, with the crew constructing an entire Shangri-La village on a soundstage in London. However, the production was not without its mishaps. During one scene, a fire broke out on set, causing panic among the cast and crew. Fortunately, everyone was evacuated safely and the damage was minimal. The incident was a stark reminder of the risks and challenges involved in filmmaking. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew of Lost Horizon remained dedicated to bringing the story to life. The film's producer, Ross Hunter, was determined to create a cinematic masterpiece, and he spared no expense in doing so. The final product was a visual feast, with stunning cinematography, elaborate sets, and unforgettable performances. In the end, Lost Horizon was a testament to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew. Despite the challenges they faced, they remain committed to creating a film that would captivate audiences for generations to come.
The 1973 movie Lost Horizon had its share of challenges during production. Producer Ross Hunter admitted in a 1975 interview with Rona Barrett that the soundtrack, crafted by Bacharach and David, was subpar due to their impending partnership dissolution. The music was finalized during pre-production, leaving no room for changes. The filming conditions were also strenuous for veteran actor John Gilgut. The required fox fur costume for the blizzard scene was worn in the scorching heat, causing significant discomfort. Despite the harsh conditions, Gilgood found solace in Gladys Cooper's former bungalow in Santa Monica and his well-equipped caravan at the Fox Ranch. Regrettably, Lost Horizon is recognized as one of the 100 most enjoyably bad movies ever made in John Wilson's book The Official Razzie Movie Guide. This recognition underscores the film's unique blend of challenges and less-than-ideal outcomes. The 1973 movie Lost Horizon, a remake of the 1937 classic, stands as a significant milestone in film history. Its portrayal of a hidden utopia, Shangri-La, showcased a unique blend of adventure, drama, and fantasy, setting a precedent for similar films. Lost Horizon's influence on future filmmaking is evident in the numerous films that explore similar themes of hidden societies and utopias. The movie's depiction of a peaceful, idyllic community isolated from the outside world can be seen in films like The Village, Avatar, and even the television series Lost. The film also left an impact on the visual style of later productions. Its grand sets, elaborate costumes, and sweeping landscapes inspired filmmakers to create more visually striking and immersive worlds. This can be seen in fantasy and science fiction films like The Lord of the Rings, Star Wars, and Dune. Lost Horizon's influence extends beyond film. It has inspired books, music, and even video games that explore the theme of a hidden utopia. The film's ability to captivate audiences for nearly five decades is a testament to its enduring appeal and influence. This film, produced by Ross Hunter, was a significant disappointment. Despite its high production cost of $6 million and a talented composer like Burt Bacharach, it was panned by critics and audiences alike. Esquire magazine declared it the worst movie of the year, and critic William Wolfe described it as atrocious and lame-brained. Even the industry audience, which included celebrities such as Doris Day, found it unbearable, with many walking out before the end. The film's failure was so disheartening that Bacharach vowed not to collaborate with anyone for a while, including his longtime partner Hal David. They both felt that the songs and score were well executed, but the film itself fell short. In the production of the 1973 movie Lost Horizon, yellow flowers planted on the set withered in the heat, requiring individual hand painting to match previously filmed footage. Despite these efforts, the movie was later included in the 50 worst films of all time by Harry Madden and Randy Lowell. To promote the film, a television special aired in 1973, featuring Richard Harris and Sammy Davis Jr. among the stars. The 1973 film adaptation of Lost Horizon faced significant financial struggles, leading it to be known in the industry as the Lost Investment. The producer, Ross Hunter, had planned to follow up this film with an original movie musical, Hollywood Hollywood, but these plans were ultimately derailed. The film was a setback for not only Hunter, but also its stars, Sally Kellerman and Bobby Van. Kellerman's next green credit was for Rafferty and the Gold Dust Twins, and Vans lost cinematic credit after Lost Horizon marked the end of his career. John Gielgud, who played Chang in the film, had mixed feelings about his role. In letters published in 2004, Gielgud described the part as an idiotic walkabout and a very stupid part. Despite his reservations, Gielgud accepted the role due to financial difficulties he had faced a few years prior. He described his costume and shaved head is making him feel like a Tibetan version of Portia in the trial scene from The Merchant of Venice with a hint of Von Stroheim's grandson by Yul Brynner. In the 1973 film adaptation of Lost Horizon, producer Ross Hunter approached Toshiro Mifune for the role of Chang, but was declined. This production is known to have inspired Bette Midler's humorous remark about Liv Ullman's musical appearances. Interestingly, the first 30 minutes of this musical remake mirror Frank Capra's 1937 original production almost shot for shot, despite the initial version taking years to recoup its cost for Columbia Pictures. George Kennedy, known for his role in the 1970 film Airport, expressed his dislike for working with John Gielgud in Lost Horizon. Helen Hayes, another Airport co-star, was cast in Lost Horizon, but when she couldn't participate, 
the role was dropped, despite Ruth Gordon's interest. Larry Kramer, who wrote the script for Lost Horizon, has openly shared his regret for the film, stating that it was the one thing he truly regrets in his life. However, the nearly 300000 he earned from the script provided him with financial security for the rest of his life, enabling him to become a successful playwright and a prominent LGBT rights activist. Jerry Whitman, a backing singer and session vocalist, was required to keep his vocal participation in the 1973 film Lost Horizon Confidential. The movie's poor performance at the box office led Whitman to feel comfortable discussing his involvement. The film features a star-studded cast, including three Oscar winners Peter Finch, George Kennedy, and Sir John Gielgud, as well as three Oscar nominees Liv Ullman, Sally Kellerman, and Charles Boyer. Interestingly, a fertility dance number was initially removed from the final print due to laughter from preview audiences. However, this scene was later restored. The inclusion of this scene, along with a talented cast, makes Lost Horizon a notable film in cinema history. In the early 1970s, Columbia Pictures released the film Lost Horizon, which became notable for several reasons. Initially, Dame Julie Andrews, Jean Arthur, and Barbara Stanwyck declined the role of the teacher in the movie. The film also caught the attention of Woody Allen, who humorously expressed his biggest regret in life as buying a ticket for it. Behind the scenes, Lost Horizon holds significance for Columbia Pictures, as it was the first movie filmed after the studio moved to the Warner Brothers lot in 1972, creating the Burbank Studios. The production utilized the castle set from the 1967 film Camelot, transforming it into Shangri-La. The medieval turrets were removed, and replaced with Tibetan gables to resemble Himalayan Buddhist monasteries. Most of the lower levels remained unchanged, and the courtyard was replaced with layered steps and fountains. The set stayed on the studio's back lot for several years before being demolished to make way for a new office building. I'd like to invite you to share your memories and experiences related to the 1973 movie Lost Horizon. This film, a remake of the 1937 classic, took us on a journey to the mystical Shangri-La, a place of peace and harmony. Did this movie inspire you, or perhaps it made you reflect on your own perspectives? We'd love to hear how Lost Horizon affected you personally. Maybe it sparked your interest in exotic locations, or its themes of unity and understanding resonated with you. By sharing your stories, you can enrich our cinematic community and inspire others to explore the film's impact on their own lives. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more explorations into the world of cinema. Your engagement helps us create a vibrant and engaging platform for film lovers of all ages. Let's keep the conversation going and the memory